Well, it's an exciting day around here. Today we are teaming up with St. Mary's Hospital and Dean Clinic for our annual Hands on Hearts. It's an opportunity to learn compression-only CPR in just 15 minutes. People of all ages can do this. Mary Jo joins us with more on why this skill is so important. Good morning, Mary Jo. Hi, good morning again, Charlotte and Dean. And you know, we talk a lot about how CO CPR can save lives, but it's also important to understand what's really going on internally too. So with us this morning is Dr. Mario Gessel. He is an interventional cardiologist with Dean Health System as well as St. Mary's Hospital. So thank you for being with us, Dr. Gessel. Thank you very much for having us. All right, so I think the important thing is to kind of define what COCPR is and how it differentiates from CPR. So what is the difference between the two? Yeah, so COCPR is basically only a chest compression only CPR. So um, in the traditional sense or when you're going to a training, uh, you will learn also chest compressions that are associated with breaths, uh, that you apply breaths to a patient. But if you just uh, do chest compressions without the breaths, that is the COCPR. And when would you actually use something like this on a person? Yeah. So if you have a family member or if you're a witness for a cardiac arrest, um, usually we, we uh, teach this uh, in the adult setting. Uh, that's a, a particular problem. Um, and you have and you witness someone is um, in cardiac arrest, you should apply chest compressions as soon as possible. And the way of just basically applying the chest compressions makes it much easier um, for the bystander or the layperson to apply these chest compressions without thinking about a very complex mechanism and breaths and, and an algorithm that you have to follow. So you don't have to think about a whole lot. It really is just remembering the basics and exactly. continuing them. Now, obviously we know kind of the steps and how we're learning how to do give COCPR, but what's happening to the person's body internally, medically speaking? Yeah, so when you have a cardiac arrest, uh, there's obviously a complete standstill. So your machine, the heart, is not working anymore. And uh, with chest compressions, you basically take over as the bystander or lay person for the several minutes that it takes to have, for example, EMS to come by. Um, even in a setting like here, we would still have to wait probably five to ten minutes before uh, a medical professional would be on the scene. So in that time frame, with your chest compressions, you're basically expelling the blood from the heart into the brain and also back to the heart again, to the arteries that are uh, giving blood to the heart. So those are really the two most important organs that you have to give blood to while you're uh, doing the chest compressions. And it sounds like, like you mentioned, what, as you're doing that and waiting for those experts, the paramedics to come, you're buying time for the person who's in cardiac distress. How important are those seconds, those minutes, to be doing something like this? They are very essential. So uh, first of all, we know that only about 20 to 40 percent of people in this uh, country receive CPR when they have a cardiac arrest. So there are some barriers, obviously, uh, for people to not apply um, CPR. And barriers like this are, for example, you don't want to do the mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, breathing for some reason, you don't want to get infected, maybe you think you're doing something wrong. and um, to facilitate that, the chest compression only CPR is really the way to do that. So it gives you really the hands-on training or that you learn and then you just apply it and just go with mm -hmm. it and you help the person. And an important tool to have. Well, Dr. Gessel, thank you for being with us here this morning. Thank you. All right, well, training will take place at 12 locations in nine communities. If you want to take part, we encourage you to find a place close to you. And of course, you can head to channel3000.com for a full listing and our very first session is at 7 this morning right here at the WISC TV studio. So if you're here on the west side, feel free to come on by. Mm -hmm. And Hattie and I are part of that 7 to 9 session. So come on down and say hi and learn something good. Thanks, Mary Jo. Mm -hmm. It only takes 15 minutes to learn this life-saving technique. And today you have a chance to learn compression-only CPR with our third annual Hands on Hearts. We are working with St. Mary's Hospital and Dean Clinic to offer multiple training sessions around South Central Wisconsin. Mary Jo is in Studio C with a preview. Good morning, Charlotte and Dina. We're here in Studio C where you can see the mannequins are out here. They're ready for our first Hands on Hearts training session coming up at 7 a.m. So that's in just a few moments here. Now Sharon Bronson is a registered nurse with St. Mary's Hospital and she's here to kind of give us a rundown of what you can expect. So Sharon, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. All right, so I know we've been talking about compression only CPR all morning long, but can you just remind viewers in case they missed it why it's an important skill to have? 
Okay. Compression only CPR is important because it's the person that is there when the person that goes down, they are there to help and starting compressions is the best chance you're going to give that person for survivor. And Dr. Gessel was with us earlier, talked a lot about how you're really helping buy that person time while the paramedics and the experts come. So can you give us a rundown of how the training is going to work? What are the steps to do compression illness okay. CPR? So the first thing is, as you see the person come down, you're going to come in and you want to say the scene is safe and you really want to look around. You're focusing on that person, but you don't want to have two victims. So you that, so that person go down. Then you're going to get down next to the um, person and you're going to say, are you okay? Can I help you here? And mm -hmm. kind of tap them on the shoulders. So make sure that they really yeah, are that, out. Yeah. Okay. And then as you're scanning the body, you're looking to see if you see any movement, you're look, see if you see any breathing. Um, and then you are identifying somebody and you would say, you in the red shirt, call 911 because you want to make sure somebody feels responsible, not mm -hmm. everybody, you don't know what people are doing on their phones. So then once you do all that, that's when you get your hands You get like your hands so. interlaced, you're putting them on the lower half of the sternum, your shoulder is directly over, your uh, elbows are straight, and you're mm -hmm. compressing at a rate of 100 a minute, and you're going down at least two inches. Okay. And so with these mannequins, when you hear that click, that's how you know that, you're going far enough. That right? you're going far enough. Now, one of the questions during the training session uh, I was a part of last year that someone brought up was, you know, what if I hurt them? What if I break a rib? If you break a rib, the rib will heal. If you do nothing, their heart has stopped, and they're not going to have a very good chance of making it. So even if I hear a crack and I think I broke a rib, maybe I didn't. So I'm going, and if, even if I did, I'm going to keep going because I have to mm -hmm. keep the blood circulating. All right, well, Sharon, thank you for being okay. with us here this morning. Okay. All right, thank well, you. the Hands on Hearts starts today. Training sessions are uh, in 12 locations within nine communities. You can head to channel3000.com for the full listing. And of course, we'll have our first one here at the WISC TV studios starting at 7. And if you want to be a part of our coverage, of course, use that hashtag hands on hearts and we'll collect all your Twitter and Instagram posts and put those together. So if you're on, on the west side, come down to the Channel 3 studios and put Charlotte and Hattie to work for this training session. All right, we'll get you working. Thank you, Mary Jo.